Hello and welcome to Mong Explaining Extra Extra. <laughs> We're doing a short interview with Ken Nimura. It's myself, Christopher. Deb's with me as well. And Ken, hello, Ken. Welcome back. Hey, how are you? <laughs> so good. This week on Mong Explaining Extra, we are running, this is our first audio clip. Here's hoping it works. We're running a short story by Ken Nimura, and it's called Spicy Tuna. And it's a, a true mix of your Spanish heritage and your Japanese heritage in one crazy, fantastic, farcical romp through Tokyo. I'm really excited that we're doing this one because when I saw it, I was just like, oh, this is perfect. We get to manga splain a little bit. We get to explore a Spanish tradition. We get to explore some Japanese traditions. We get to put it all up on the on the blog for people to read. It's going to be super fun. Thanks so much, A, for working with us on this and B, sitting down for this interview, Ken. No, super excited about this, especially because like when you, were, you wrote me and you were like, do you have something that maybe you could publish? And I went through my things. And I kind of remember like, oh my God, yeah, like I actually did this thing like so, so long ago. And it kind of like had like forgotten about it in a way. So mm -hmm. it, it's going to be fun, I guess, like to, you know, whatever we talk about, like, you know, go back to it and, you know, remember what it used to be like I don't know, 10 years ago. <laughs> so this is, I'm really curious about this. So this is about Latuna. This would have been, you wrote this before you worked on Henshin and maybe even just sort of during or just after I Kill Giants then? Is that correct? Yeah, or? so right after i killed giants before moving to japan so i was like i would like to do i would like uh, like you know i would like to work in japan with a japanese publisher for that i might need to have something like a pilot of something i would like to maybe do with them and mm -hmm. so i worked on that while living abroad not in japan mm. and so the thing is it's kind of funny because i, I go back and i'm like what was i thinking when I did this thing. <laughs> so the genesis of the story is that there's a character in the comic that's called Miguel Angel. He's a real person. I what? Mean, he's a friend of mine. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't show you. Yeah, yeah. So he, he, he exists. When you come to Japan, I'll introduce you to him. He's an amazing character. And so he's a Spanish friend of mine who lives in Tokyo. And he's a musician. He plays at different places, playing Italian or French, Spanish music. Among of those, he's also part of La Tuna in Tokyo. And so for listeners that maybe are like Latuna what? They're like Latuna is this thing in 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 Spain. It's uh, the equivalent would be you could say it's something like Spanish mariachis. That could be the easiest way to put it somehow. Mm. And so it's some it's a tradition that began with universities in Spain so or 500 years ago where you had like cities you had students and mostly you had like people that didn't have i mean students didn't have the means to pay their studies and, and food and everything and so what they did was like they would just go out play music and earn money through that mm -hmm. and so that's continued as a tradition and to the point where right now in most of the universities in spain you have a group of tuna that comes from the word tunante which is like rascal and so each university has their tuna and their like competitions and stuff. And that's a tradition that you also have in certain South American countries, as well as Portugal. It's very, you know, Hispanic, you could say. However, the truth is that from a Spanish point of view, it's something very dated because like they're wearing this kind of like medieval, I mean, the, they were the clothing that the medieval student would wear back in the day. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of like obnoxious because like maybe you're having a drink at the bar and then suddenly <laughs> they come, they crash the party, they start playing their music, they take the girls most of the times. And you're like, what are these guys? You know, they're they're pests. So it, it it has that kind of like outdated thing. And they're they're playing like very traditional, like clavelitos or like super old Spanish songs. And so this friend of mine, Miguel Angel, he plays that in Japan, which is just like it's it's like planet Mars. I mean, like, people don't even know what they're looking at. It sounds like the least Japanese thing I've ever heard <laughs> that someone would be like, I'm going to get a tambourine and I'm going to start running around making music for people while begging for money. Absolutely. Uh, it's like, yeah, that's awesome. And nobody <laughs> in Japan knows these songs, right? So it doesn't have no. this nostalgic feel. So like, what? <laughs> the funny thing is that, especially Tokyo being Tokyo, people, you know, dress up in so many different ways that you see my friend wearing the cape and everything and nobody even looks at him. They're like, well, you know, another, another, just another weird guy from somewhere. <laughs> and so I don't know why I was like, I think I went to see like one of his performances in Tokyo and I was like, 
this is so weird. Like, <laughs> this is, and, and there is that thing where, yeah, of course, like, I mean, if he goes to like a Japanese bar or whatever, people like sing with him or because they are super engaging, they're fun. But at the same time, they're not really understanding what's happening mm. there at the same time. There's, you know, they get it, but they don't get it. And, um, and I was like, it might be like a fun starting point for, for a story that we could make. Mm. And so I was like, if I'm going to try to, mm, sell this in in japan maybe like the typical like shonen story or seinen story where you're like oh i have this japanese student i mean the the whole backstory was like there's a japanese student a college student that's super shy and he's in love with a girl and by chance he meets these like spanish students that have this tuna club in in their university and they're like you're gonna join it join us you don't have a choice and you're gonna become (laughs) amazing and so it's just like this like japanese character you know learning how to you know just becoming more outgoing and you know there are so many things that are interesting about the way the training you could say of a tuna is where you start apparently that's all things i've heard but like apparently when you're the very newcomer they dress you up like in the most like ridiculous way they can think of like with I don't know, like a clown outfit or like women underwear, whatever. And they're like, go out, play music, have fun. And so it's a, <laughs> it's a crash course on like battling with your own, like, you know, shyness and, you know, what people could think of, you know, what you do. Or whatever. Mm. And for example, and, and there's this other thing, which I love, which is like the, um, the very last test for you before becoming a, a tuna, a real tuna, is that they will, they will take these newcomers I'm pretty sure that the narrative is like you get drunk and suddenly you wake up somewhere and you don't know where you are. And you might, they might have <laughs> taken you hundreds of kilometers away from your home. And all you have, you have no money, you have nothing, you don't, and you only have your instrument. And you have to manage to go back home somehow, whichever way, through your music. Either you're like, can you give me a ride and I'll play some music for you? Or can I play some music and you give me some money? Or could you give me whatever? And which it's, it's so, it's so shonen in a way, right? <laughs> so this thing of like, we're, um, you're going to overcome your fears and become stronger and things. And I was like, it might be, there might be like a fun story in there where you can, you know, unite these like tuna culture with Japanese contemporary culture. And then like this kind of like more, more shonen structure and make something out of it. And so the, Spicy Tuna short story is kind of like, you know, it was like a presentation card for that project mm. that I did and I put out as a dojinshi, as a jin, in one of the committees in 2011. Ah, okay. Mm. So that was like one of the very first things that you made while you were while you were in Japan. Oh, that's so, that, or for, for Japan, that's super fun. I know when we read it, our first go through, we were just like, okay, what exactly <laughs> is going on here? Because it's... yeah incorporating so many different ideas that are so culturally specific and it's telling the story that resolves. But once, once we sort of cracked it, it's amazing. Like you've done this, like Frasier, uh, this Frasier is my go-to for this, but Frasier level farce yeah. of like these things that keep building on themselves. And it's like miscommunications that come back to haunt these people, but it creates the next thing that will be the next miscommunication that will haunt the next person until you get to the end. And it resolves and everyone is like maybe a little beaten up, but very happy yeah. with how things went. And I thought that was like, once we cracked the story, it was like, oh, this is amazing. But our next job was how do we make North American <laughs> readers get all these references and stuff? So we've worked really hard. We hope that if you're listening to this, that you're also going to read the story and enjoy it. Our editor, Andrew, my husband, has worked really hard on it. And and Deb has given some feedback. Obviously, Ken is invested in making sure that the story is going to be as enjoyable in English to someone who's never heard of any of these traditions as it is to someone who's Spanish and Japanese and who's familiar with all of these traditions. So we're really, really excited. You let us present the story to people. It's, it's very cool. No, thank you. Because it, it, it's been so funny going back to it and especially thinking that, you know, it's something that I created thinking of like Japanese readers. I had them in mind. So then it's like, okay, so how do you present both, you know, Spanish and Japanese elements to like a third culture in a way. So <laughs> yeah. it's, it's quite an exercise. So yeah, thanks so much for, you know, all the efforts you've been making to make it more, you know, readable and understandable. 
it's not even readable. It's more like, cause you can read lots of things, but it's like you use a good bit of visual shorthand for things like the NGOs that are handing out like mm. food for the homeless mm -hmm. or the Yakuza or, or illicit character, for example, that if someone didn't realize that like, Oh, dyed hair and sunglasses means this sort of thing in this context. So it's been really fun trying to figure all of that out. Like what is a reader who's not familiar with any of these cultural touchstones going to feel? And that's, yeah, it's one of the neat things that I'm glad we get to do on, on Manga Splaining Extra and actually sort of reveal the whole process of, because I think a lot of that stuff, a lot of the, like the, the translation and the localization and stuff is kind of hidden from readers sometimes. Mm. So getting to talk to you, and we never, translators and localizers never get to talk to the <laughs> author either. So this is really special, I think. Yeah. And I also, I think I'll try to look for the picture somewhere, but I, I also like played with Miguel and his friends. Oh, yeah. 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 So, please, please share this. All the tambourine thing, it's actually based on like me dressing up as a tuno and going out with them to play with them in, in I think, Yokohama. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. It was, it was so, oh my God. I learned so much. I was so bad. But, you know, again, like there is this kind of like tuna philosophy where they're like, listen, if you're bad at playing, it doesn't really matter. Just make people enjoy their, you know, their time and, you know, you know, make the most out of what you have. It was, you know, so interesting, like seeing something that for me looked so outdated in such a funny context and yet like being able to take something very genuine and very inspiring out of it. Because like, regardless, you know, of their looks and maybe what they do, which might be sometimes a little bit questionable, you know, there's something really genuine and positive underneath, right? Mm -hmm. Which is, I think, very important. That's so cool. Deb, any final thoughts? No, I'm just excited to read this. If your friend has any YouTube videos of him playing, please send it along because obviously there's, mu there's a music element to this. So it would be nice to hear what, what you're describing. Oh, yeah. I'll make sure that, you know, I'll say I find some links and everything. You're going to say it's quite a thing. It's quite a thing. I will say my only experience with something like that in Japan was we were at uh, Yebisu Garden Palace in Ibisu. They do a big Christmas tree and they do a big crystal chandelier every Christmas every year. And we were just sort of standing here and all of a sudden we heard medieval music, hmm. which was very medieval, like English, England music. And we sort of looked and a whole troop of like Renaissance reenactors, mm -hmm. Japanese Renaissance reenactors came out and did traditional like medieval Christmas dances as like, a, like that they had been choreographing and practicing. That wasn't like a department store offering or like no one was like, like paying them to do it. It was just like, we're going to go dance in this public space. And it was the most amazing, crazy, wonderful discordant is how I would think of it. Like, you're you're in this space and you're not really expecting to see this and it was it was pretty awesome. I can only imagine I can only imagine this YouTube video you're going to share us is just as good. I can't wait to see it. Thank you. Look forward to it. Well, unfortunately, Deb's internet has suffered a small problem, so I'm going to have to say goodbye right now. And if you're listening, please go ahead and read the comic. Ken, thank you for sharing your time with us again today. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And you know, glad to talk to you. <laughs>